Hello again, this is Steven, and in this video, I wanted to show you how you can take a model in Maya. This is just an incomplete character that I've been working on, but I'm going to show you how to take this model from Maya, bring it into Substance Painter, and actually use this new UV unwrap feature in Substance Painter to actually get some UVs out of this. And to start off with, I'll show you in Maya that the UVs, I've just been modeling this character, the UVs for this character are not done at all. So this is what they look like because I've just been modeling and have not been laying out the UVs yet. Now I could use the UV editor in Maya and the UV tools in Maya to lay out the UVs for this character, but I wanted to show you this feature that's in Substance Painter that's actually pretty cool. It does a pretty good job and you can bring it back into Maya and use the UV editor in Maya to improve the UVs that are laid out in Substance Painter. You can also use Substance Painter to paint on your model once you've done this and bring it back into Maya as well. And so that's kind of a neat little workflow that you can do this. So the first thing I want to point out is I've got some construction history here that I need to get rid of. I've just been modeling and performing actions. And so when you see all these tabs that over here in the attribute editor, you see all these tabs that represent different parts of the construction history. You can go to edit and then delete by type and history and it's going to get rid of all those. So you'll see that you're just left over with the, you know, basic object and I can come over here and call this, you know, my character. That's my the mesh or sorry, that's the transform, the mesh, an initial shading group and the Lambert 1. So the very first thing that I need to do is make sure that I have a different material on this character. So I'm going to right click and go to assign new material. And in the assign new material I could use a lot of different materials for this character, but I want to use an Arnold specific material. So I'm going to use this AI standard surface material. And you'll notice that it has a lot of different attributes and a lot of different properties that I can map different things to. But that's how I'm going to start out with this. And I'm going to just go ahead and save that. I do want to make sure that the FBX exporter is actually installed. So I'm going to go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, and down to the Plugin Manager. And in the Plugin Manager, actually what I'm going to use is this search feature to type in FBX and then enter. And you're going to see it has this FBX Maya bundle or .mll on the PC. Since I'm on a Mac, it's a .bundle. And then you can make sure it's loaded. If it's loaded, you'll have the export functionality in Maya. So I'm going to close that. The next step that I want to do, I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Export. But I don't want to go to Export All. I want to go to Export Selection because I have the character selected that I want to export from. So I'm working in a current project, and I uh, have the Export Selection dialog box open. A couple things that I want to make sure of. Under this File Specific Options, you're going to see this geometry. So I'm going to expand that. I already had it open, but make sure you turn on smoothing groups. This is usually off by default. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to scroll down. The other thing that I want to do is normally it's set to automatic in terms of units. So it's under this advanced options. You're going to see units. I'm going to turn off automatic right now because I'm kind of working in a game workflow to a certain degree where I've set the Maya units to meters. Well, what I want to do is I want to set this to centimeters because I want the units in the FBX file that I'm going to export to bring into Substance Painter is going to be the same scale as it is in Maya. I just want to make sure it's set to centimeters and it's the same scale in this case. All right? And then I've already exported it, but I named it, you know, this character's name is Bob. So I named it bob.fbx and I'd already exported it once, but I'm going to do it again. But I'm going to make sure again, it's turned off of automatic, converted to centimeters, and that smoothing groups is, is turned on. And then I'm going to click export selection. It's going to say it already exists because I already made it, but I'm going to save over it. And now once it's saved to the FBX file, I'm going to switch over to Painter, which I have open here in the background. If you uh, don't have it already open, you can open it and work from there. And if you've never used Painter before, this is just sort of a brief introduction to Painter and how to get your model over here. Is you go to File, and I'm going to go to New, right? I don't want to go to Open because I can't just open the FBX, but I need to make a new Substance Painter project. I'm going to choose this PBR Metallic Roughness, which is the, the template. There's a lot of other templates. Unfortunately, there, there's not a template for, you know, specifically for Maya and Arnold, but 
This metallic roughness is a good template to start from. I'm going to choose the file. This is the file that I'm going to be opening. And that's my bob.fbx file. And I'm going to open that. I'm going to, I can choose a different document resolution if I want. I'm going to leave it at 1024. Because I'm going to Maya, what I want to do is instead of using this DirectX normal map format, I'm going to choose OpenGL. Maya uses the OpenGL normal map format. And then I'm going to scroll down. I don't need to worry about, I'm not working with a UV tile settings, this workflow, but, and I don't need to worry about importing cameras. So usually that's on by default. So I turn that off. I don't worry about the cameras. I'm not going to need to bring those into Substance Painter, but I am going to check this auto unwrap. It usually was on by default now. This is a new feature in the more recent versions of Substance Painter. And then I'm going to choose options. And I'm going to choose under seams, it's going to say generate only missing data. I'm going to choose all to recompute all seams. And when you choose seams, it's going to choose the other ones as recompute all. If I choose generate only missing data, I could also choose that here, right? Or recompute all, but this one will recompute everything. And I'm going to keep the margin size set to small. What that means is if there are existing UVs, it's going to recompute all of them. Substance Painter, this auto unwrap feature is going to recompute all the UVs. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK down here. I could import any other baked maps that I created in Maya, but I didn't. So I'm going to click OK. Sometimes, if, depending on the complexity of your model or what your mesh, how, how dense your mesh is, this could take a while. You might see a status box pop up showing you, you know, the, the time that it takes to recompute all these UVs. But over here, I have this, by the way, I have this 3D and 2D view open. I can actually look at what the UVs look like. This is what they're going to look like. And it's kind of interesting. You can see the fingers are over here and the legs and the feet and the body. And here's the head. Well, I could probably do a better job of laying it out. This is a good place to start and then I could bring it into Maya and actually work with it a little bit better. But it's actually not too bad. It didn't do too bad of a job on this simple character. On more complex characters, it might have a harder job on or more complex models. So I'm just going to do really quickly, I'm just going to add kind of a material to this just to kind of give it a base color. But I just want to show you how quickly to go back to Maya. So it doesn't save your changes. It doesn't automatically save these changes back to the FBX file. So I have to move it back to the FBX file. I, if I just do a file and save, it's going to save it as a .spp, a, you know, a substance painter project, right? But I don't want to do that because I can't bring that back into Maya. I can save that as I'm making, you know, changes to this object so that way if I want to come back and repaint it or whatever I can do that. So what I'm going to end up doing though is exporting back the mesh. So I go to export. It's going to say without displacement tessellation and apply triangulation. Now since I built this in quads, I don't want to bring it back into Maya as triangulation. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to export. And in here it's actually naming it after the material and the template that I chose. But I can just select that bob.fbx file that I had saved before and save it back to that. There's a couple different options for you to save your file. I find the FBX works really well with Maya and saves a lot in there. It contains a lot in that file. And it's built to go back and forth from Maya. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And I'm going to go ahead and replace it because I'd already saved it. Exported the mesh successfully. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back to Maya and I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go to Open Scene. In the Open dialog box, I'm going to choose the FBX file and I'm going to click Open. And then what it did is it actually brought my model in and brought the UVs. You can see here in the UV texture editor that it brought those UVs in, right? The only weird thing that happens when you do this it kept this AI standard surface one name, but it changed it to a phone. And all I have to do is change that back to the AI standard surface, right? Or whichever material you want to use. I'm using this because I want to render in Arnold. And then what I could do is once I'm in Substance Painter, I can go back to Substance Painter. I can actually export the textures. And when I do that back in Maya, I'll be able to connect those textures 
to say the color channel by mapping it. As long as I save those maps to my project directory, it'll find them right away when I connect them. And I'll have a future video where I talk about how to make those connections and get the textures from Substance Painter back into Maya and get them on my character because the UVs are gonna be the same between Substance Painter and Maya. I hope this helps and it's a really nice little trick to move back and forth between Maya and Substance Painter and good luck with it.